And here's LaFleur shooting! Oh. He gives it into Lemire, back to LaFleur! Oh. The man many say is the finest hockey player in the world today. When most people think back at the career of Guy Lafleur, they probably picture him flying down the ice in a Canadian's jersey. His hair just flowing seconds before he put the puck in the back of the net. He did it for 14 seasons in Montreal, winning two hearts, three scoring titles, a Conn Smythe trophy, and five Stanley Cups. But what they probably don't think about is how he became a Montreal Canadian. And you can see why. On the surface, it seems pretty straightforward. The Habs had the number one pick in the 1971 draft, and they selected a player who not only spent the last two seasons rewriting the QMJHL record book, but also was from the province of Quebec. But dig a little deeper, and some questions arise. How did a 42-win team get that number one pick? Better yet, how did the Stanley Cup champs get the player that everyone wanted? And finally, wasn't the draft designed to help struggling teams in the league? Well, let's take a closer look. Okay, you didn't need to be an expert to see that Guy Lafleur was special after two seasons with the Quebec Ramparts of the QMJHL. All you had to do was look at his numbers. In his first season, he scored 103 goals in 56 games. In his second, a mind-boggling 130 goals in 62 games. Meanwhile, there was another French-Canadian player by the name of Marcel Dion, and he was putting up some absurd points in the OHA at the exact same time. Now, whether you thought Lafleur or Dion should go number one, the bottom line was this. If you were an NHL team with a top two pick in the 1971 draft, you were getting a can't-miss prospect. And no one knew that better than Habs GM Sam Pollock. And he got to work early, even before Lafleur's 130 goal season even began. Now remember, this was an era in the draft where the team that finished dead last in the standings got the number one overall pick. Now quick peek at those standings at the time saw the California Golden Seals at the bottom and showing absolutely no signs of improving anytime soon. So Pollock picked up the phone and called their GM Frank Selke Jr and he pulled off the trade. And it broke down like this. The Habs got California's first round pick in the 1971 draft and Francois Lacombe. The Golden Seals, well, they got the Habs' first round pick in the upcoming draft in 1970, as well as Ernie Hickey. And now that that was done, all Pollock needed was for the terrible California Golden Seals to, well, stay terrible and finish in last place for the 1970-71 season. So he engineered another trade, but this time with the intent of improving the LA Kings, who were almost as bad as the Seals, and they were threatening to disrupt Pollock's entire plan. So he sent a former All-Star and six-time Stanley Cup champion Ralph Backstrom to the Kings for a helping hand. And it worked. When the season wrapped up, the Golden Seals were dead last, the Habs had the number one pick, and even though there was still some Lafleur Dion wavering right up until the last minute, they took the flower with that pick. The Golden Seals, well, they would play in California until the 75-76 season, then move to Cleveland to become the Barons for a couple seasons before eventually merging with the Minnesota North Stars. While Lafleur and the Habs, yeah, I would say they did pretty well. But you can't help but ask yourself, what if? What if the Golden Seals just refused the trade and ended up drafting Lafleur themselves? Would that have been enough to save their franchise? What if the Golden Seals didn't finish last that season? Could you see Guy Lafleur as a Red Wing or a Canuck? What about a Penguin or King? And finally, what if the Habs decided to draft Marcel Dion instead? Yes, he went on to have a Hall of Fame career, but you have to wonder how many cups he would have won in Montreal and would Lafleur have won any playing elsewhere? But none of that happened. Instead, one trade changed hockey history.